Okay, so I'm going to be talking about DNA once more, surprise, surprise. And uh, we're just going to take things a little bit further from what we discussed in the screencast yesterday. Um, and let's back up a little bit and talk about um, you, in fact. And understand that it's uh, always a little weird to think about this, but your father's sperm, here we have your dad's sperm, and your mom's egg. And we'll just make mom's egg pink because, you know, boys are blue and women are pink. Um, and obviously, I don't need to talk about what brought those two things together because that would make you really uncomfortable. And I kind of wish that I was around watching so I could see you squirm. But what's most important here is that um, each of these cells brought together their complement of chromosomes. And don't forget, chromosomes are made up of a combination of DNA and protein. And each one of them brought 23 of them. Okay, so we have 23 chromosomes from mom's egg and oh, I got to set up a blue here. All right, there we go. And 23 chromosomes from dad's sperm. And that led to the first cell. And we call that first cell, cell the zygote. And so the zygote has in its uh, nucleus would have a total of 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, understand that since this first cell, this zygote here, um, is going to be in some sense, or absolutely, is going to be the ancestor of all the cells that make up who you are today. And we're not going to go into the details of this, we will later, but we undergo a cell division called mitosis. And eventually what you end up with is a ball of cells. And I'm actually going to pause it and do this and then come back. Okay, so I have a, a huge ball of cells here. And it actually continues to grow and it gets uh, hollow and, and uh, sort of doubles up in its thickness. And... It's pretty amazing, but what's most important is because each cell came from that original zygote there, then each one of these individual cells also has the 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. I could write 46 in every single one of those cells, but I don't feel like doing it because that's just downright silly. I think you understand the process here. And then eventually those cells specialize, they turn into sort of, uh, you know, brain cells, they might turn into skin cells, liver cells, intestinal cells, muscle cells, etc. And what's vital to understand is that every single one of the cells in your body, since it came from this dude right here with its 46 chromosomes, that means every single cell in your body right now, except for your red blood cells, uh, because when they mature, they lose their nucleus, has 46 chromosomes. What is this, Lumpy? You have to read it. Okay. All right. Something about getting this to school early? Yes. Okay. Well, can I go? I'm sure you can. I just have to look at it more carefully when I'm not doing okay. a screencast. All right. So what we have here then is that if I were to take a look at your body, oops, let's change it to black there. And here's a, a perfect spitting image of each of your bodies here. And I were to pick off a, say, a cell out of your brain. So we're going to look at something called a neuron. And then I went over here to your left calf and I ripped out a muscle cell. And I dug into the nucleus of each one of those things. And that's what I'm going to call those little black centers. Okay. I would discover, oh, that's crappy. I would discover that, no surprise here, that you would have 46 chromosomes in those nuclei. And in fact, the chromosomes themselves, you can, uh, in certain, certain circumstances, you can take pictures of them, and we can arrange them in order of size. So we would have a big chromosome, a little bit smaller, etc., etc. And I'd have 23 of these. And now I'm going to write this out and, and, uh, and then come back online. Okay, see, I, I didn't plan very well. Um, oops. But if you were to count up all those things, you would see that there are 23 of those little sticks there, each representing a different chromosome. And again, like I said just seconds ago, that they're, they're in order of size. Um, 
hanging out there. Now, if that is 23, then we obviously have a set of 23 that are from your other parent. So let me copy and paste. Okay, so what I have here is this is the 23 that are from mommy, and this is the 23 that are from daddy. And if I were to simply, let's say, focus in on this one, this would be, say, chromosome number three, and then this would be chromosome number three from mom. So here's dad's chromosome number three, here's mom's chromosome number three. I could find whether I was in this neuron up here, I could find that chromosome number 23, or this muscle cell, I could find that chromosome number 23 also hanging out in the nucleus of each one of those cells. However, what's kind of cool about this, and this is an important thing, is that despite the fact that we understand that each one of these chromosomes contain a gene, and that through the central dogma, that from DNA, meaning the genes, you code for something called RNA, which ultimately leads to proteins, right? The central dogma all over again. Every single one of the chromosomes has the potential to make proteins, right? But that means that every single neuron here has the potential to be a muscle cell, too, because all the information that's stored in your DNA is the information that could be used to become a neuron, to become a liver cell, to become a muscle cell, to become a skin cell, etc. And what's remarkable about this is that once a cell has specialized itself, and we have another name for that, it's called differentiation, once a cell has specialized, it doesn't go back. It only reads those sections of the DNA that it needs to to become to, to stay and perform the functions of that particular cell so that a neuron continues to be a neuron and a muscle cell continues to be a muscle cell and any cell that develops from that muscle cell through cell division will continue to be a muscle cell it will never become a neuron but that doesn't mean there's not the potential for a neuron to be able to have all the information to make an entirely new one of you. So every single one of the cells that you have has information in there to make an exact clone of you. Now we're going to talk about cloning much later, but I want you to understand the implication of that because of um, how cool it is to understand that the complexity of the organism is much more than you could ever imagine. Okay, this is a short one, and uh, I don't think there's much more that I need to tell you here, so I'm signing off. Bye.